All right, so time to talk about the new Beta FPV P1 air unit, HD VTX, and that's what it looks like. And I already knew this was kind of coming. Um, all of the things were kind of, the, basically the writing was on the wall already. When the, um, the Kila 20 HD came out, and I did a review on this uh, RTF system here, this is really targeted towards first time pilots, beginners, not like the traditional, FPV crowd, so um, you can go watch this video if you want. It kind of gives you an idea what the video quality is like. Go check that out. I'll link that in the description. But now for you DIY guys that want to build your own drones with this technology in here, they have the VTX available now. And pretty amazing price, $38. Obviously just for the uh, VTX there, as you see, camera, the VTX unit and the antenna. They also have the goggles for sale for $149. And this was also announced. This is their new Meteor 75 Pro with P1 VTX in there, $130. So quite competitive in terms of pricing for what you get for a digital system. And I think, you know, this budget system is really going for those folks that are interested in FPV. They don't like the video quality of analog. They would prefer digital, but they don't like the prices of digital, like uh, an HD or it's like a, like a DJI, um, you know, O4 system, for example, quite a bit more expensive than this one. So they're kind of, you know, they're trying to appease the people that want to fly FPV for cheap, like analog prices, but digital. And this is kind of not quite as cheap as analog. I, some people might argue that it's cheaper in terms of the goggles. And of course, these are box goggles. So if you want to get really high end analog stuff, you can definitely spend more than this, of course. But I think that that's what they're targeting. They're targeting people that are not really wanting to spend too much, but they want the higher quality of digital and the prices of analog. So I can kind of, kind of see where this is kind of going. Now, for those of you who are like, oh, you know, how compatible is this with the CADIC system and other future systems? So they do talk a little bit about this on their product page on the uh, air unit. So, you know, they're saying this is an open system, artisan inside and cap supported. Not really sure what that means. I didn't really get a good answer from beta feed about that. But I believe the firmware that they're running on their system is actually supported by artisan, the creators of the hardware. And I believe Cadex might be using something really similar in terms of hardware, but they're using their own proprietary firmware. So that leads me to believe that this system from Beta FPV is probably going to be compatible with other systems that are coming out from other companies uh, that will, will basically use this artisan inside and cap supported, I guess, um, uh, backdrop of what the technology is because I don't believe beta FPV has the in-house talent to develop software the firmware for the VTX so they're probably just using what artisan developed and whoever else is going to be you know taking up this um, particular video HD video system they'll probably use that same um, you know uh, firmware so it's going to be on other you know, future devices that might be coming out from Artisan. And again, probably not going to be compatible with Caddx. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm, this is a lot of speculation on my part. I'm not 100% sure on all this one. So, you know, you guys can tell me I'm wrong down in the comments. I'm sure some people will say that anyway. Now, what's interesting is there was a, someone left a comment on one of, on, on my, the Aquila 20 uh, review video that the VTX would be sold for $35 which is kind of like, I was like, how, how are they getting that specific information? And the goggles would be sold for $100. And I'm like, that would be kind of crazy because that price doesn't ma match up with what, what you get here in the kit with the controller and all on the batteries and everything. And I thought it'd be a little bit higher. And I suspect that wherever these rumors are coming from or wherever it got leaked, the $35 and $100 is probably the, what's called the bill of materials, the BOM, what, what, what the actual components cost to build it. So I suspect Beta FPV is not making much on this VTX. They're probably spending $35 per unit on the VTX, which is, you know, I think it's, it's still digital. It's still digital video being transmitted. 
So $35 was what they're probably spending. And then probably beta PVs, cost of materials for the goggles is around hundred dollars with all the, you know, all the components in there. And then of course, you know, they have their standard, um, markup there for profit for making something. So maybe, maybe somehow the, uh, their build of materials costs got leaked out somewhere and that's where that numbers where those numbers came from. But yeah, still $149 for the goggles and, um, $38 for the VTX is pretty, pretty good. And actually, you know, if you wanted to build your own sort of ready to fly kit, you can, if, you know, if you just want to get the drone, you can just pick up the, Meteor 75 Pro P1 for 130, and then the goggles for 100 and uh, you know, about 150. So still less than 100, still less than 300. And then, you know, if you don't like the light radio uh, four that came with this kit here, which a lot of people uh, said they didn't, you can pick up Radio Master or whatever, like in the pocket for like 65 dollars, and you got a pretty decent um, system that is a little bit more than I think this is like three. 60 so maybe around the same cost or maybe a little bit less somewhere around there depending on which you pick or where you pick it up at so there's definitely a lot of possibilities uh, a lot of potential for different ways to go and of course if you want to build your own drone this is just a standard uh 25 by 25 whip board again i'll link all this stuff in the description so you can read all this obviously i'm going to be skipping over a lot of the important stuff um, because I will be getting this stuff at some point later and yeah, six, six and a half grams camera included for the air unit. Uh, if you don't include camera, it's 3.6 grams. So very light 25 by 25 in terms of the mounting holes. So standard whoop style. I think it's five volts. Um, it's a 14 millimeter with, with camera and 170 degree field of view. So it's not the best camera in the world again check out my review you'll see the video quality it's 1080p video 60 fps so you know it's definitely not dgi quality and does support beta flight flight control as well as the beta fpv flight controller that's in the aquila and just show you a little diagram here of what the boards look like the flight controller port usb port which is a plug and then there's a diagram right below here that kind of shows uh, what those plugs are. So we'll get down. Let's get right over there to that. So they're saying five kilometers of range. There's a video. I'll I'll talk about that here in a second. It's only 200 milliwatts of output. So again, DJI 04 goes up to two watts or 2,000 milliwatts. So it's really not in the same league. This is that video I will get to here in a second. It does show it does go to 5.64 kilometers, but uh, the video is kind of you know so-so in terms of the quality and uh, let's see let's find there's there's a diagram here that shows the plug yeah so here's the diagram that shows the plug it's a six pin very familiar looking i believe this is the same order as what you would find on a dji system you know in terms of power ground the uarts that goes to the flight controller and then you have these two other pins here that are just ground and usually pin six is like s bus but on, on dji but obviously here's this na because this obviously not going to be using s bus but again it's only five volts on this one not um you know wide voltage range like you find in a dji system and then the other plug over here this other four pin plug you can see here it has um usb looks like that's v bus is positive voltage i believe and then this ground then you have dp and dn now i'm not 100 percent sure but i believe this is the same plug that's on their flight controllers so if you look at their latest um 1s flight controllers the ones for the pavo 20 pro they use the same plug here i believe that goes to that little um adapter the, the usb c port adapter and i believe this is going to be for firmware updates but again i'll i'll, I'll find no more once i i get this in in hand now going to their video on their range test you know five kilometers this is the start of the video and we'll just um, play it here for a little bit. But basically you start off at a bit rate at 16 megabits, which is the maximum. And obviously you get a pretty decent picture as you start out. But then when you go out to where they go to like over five kilometers away, the signal drops off and then the bit rate drops off. So here at the end of their test, you know, showing their distance, like over it's like 5.6 kilometers away, the bit rate drops down to about two megabits. So the image quality does degrade. 
And interestingly, I think what it does in terms of the bit, basically when the bitrate drops down, uh, it's kind of fuzzy, less detailed, etc. It's hard to see in this sort of test here where they're doing basically looking at the ocean and then some clouds. So the difference between 16 megabits and two megabits isn't as uh, apparent, especially in their video, but it might be more apparent if you're flying in like more of a, an environment where there's a lot more details. But it, the fact that they can go that far in open air is kind of impressive. Um, now, it's, they're probably, in this case, they're using like, I think a seven inch drone. It's kind of funny at the beginning of the video, they, they're saying they're using a seven inch whoop, which is like, what the hell is that? And um, yeah, they they probably have GPS rescue on this quad and a bunch of, I mean, probably a lot, way better antennas for long range. That's definitely a lot different than the Aquila 20 here, which has like a little tiny patch antenna in the back. So the results that you're going to have are really going to be really, we're going to vary based on your equipment. But you know, I did a penetration test on this one. I try to go like around the corner of a building where there's a lot of concrete, and I'll link that video was all in the description in case you missed it. But um, because it's only 200 milliwatts, the penetrating power of this video signal isn't very good. So it, as soon as I get around that corner and a lot of that concrete starts to block the signal, the bitrate drops off very quickly. Now, in, in this particular test that I, I ran, I actually um, lost control of the quad because my ELRS signal uh, fail safe and that's, that's what actually caused my crash. So I... I basically can't do any further testing and with this system here to, in terms of penetration uh, and build, you know, it's around concrete buildings because the radio can only go to 100 milliwatts. So I'm, I may need to figure out some way to either take this video transmitter out of here and put in something else or bind it to a radio with more output power for the Express LRS connection just to see what happens when if I get totally behind the building. I'm, Obviously, it's going to get the bit rate's going to drop a lot. So, how flyable that is is probably not going to be much at 200 milliwatts. So, my my advice to those of you that want to use this system for bando flying, definitely look elsewhere. It just doesn't have the, in my opinion, it just doesn't have the penetration penetrating power to go through concrete. Now. If you have proof that I'm wrong on this, let me know in the comments and I'm more than happy to say that uh, you know I made a mistake. But my guess is that this 200 milliwatts of power on this particular system isn't going to get isn't going to be bando worthy. So for those of you that want to fly bandos, I would not go with the system. I, you know, I would look at, you know, DJI 04. Uh, which can go to a much higher output power. I think this is going to be for people that are more into flying in open areas, parks with not a lot of trees, um, not don't want to fly too far, but they want sort of that uh, higher video quality that you get from HD, even though it's only 1080p. So there'll be more content on this. I I still have to do a few more videos on the system itself. Um, and then maybe I'll take the VTX out of here and put it into something else. We'll see. Let me know what you guys want to see in the comments below. That'll do it for this video. Talk to you guys in the next one.